everyone and welcome to Learn Channel. My name is Mimi and I will be your host for this episode. The finance world is very near to a new technology explosion that will change the financial world. And this means finance professionals out there better get ready. What's in store for the future of money and finance? To answer this question, we've invited Rudy Shushani, an expert in ICT governance, policies and digital transformation and cybersecurity in the financial sector. With 21 years of experience in information technology, he is a part of Forbes Technology Council and he was recently selected in top 50 global thoughts leaders and influencers. Rudy, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you as our guest. Uh, thank you, Mimi, for hosting me, and thank you, Learn Channel, also for this hosting. I think uh, it's a great chance for us to get together and talk about what's the future of the financial ins uh, institutions as a whole. Let's start off by explaining what fintech is. Uh, well, in fintech, in easy terms, it's about financial technologies. But let's actually, actually go further. In essence, it is about the business. Uh, that adopts those financial technologies and new ways of business models and how they actually utilize that technology to enhance and automate their financial services and processes. So it's much beyond just the word technology or finance. It's about transforming their internal businesses or even innovating and renovating and creating new business models towards today challenges which are really upon us from left and right from the market. Tell us more about the latest fintech trends. What is new in the fintech world? Well, there's a lot of things that are new in the fintech world and the trends are going as we speak. In the last three, four years, things has changed a lot, especially after uh, COVID-19. It starts with uh, blockchain, how it is now integrated more into the business. It starts with artificial intelligence and how really it is helping all of those organizations making sure and making sound of use of data that they are actually utilizing. Because today we are in an age of data and how do you utilize the data? That's your winning point. And this is where you need the artificial intelligence. Uh, the voice technology, the more we utilize this technology, the less we have stress on our call centers, front facing customers and so on. We can offload up to 90% of our daily uh, interference with our clients. Uh, regulation technologies, robotic process automation that's helping us also making sense and making sure our processes are automated in the finest way. Uh, Internet of Things, you'll be uh, actually shocked to understand that Internet of Things is playing a big role in financial world. Uh, our cloud adoption, uh, payment services, um, biometric technologies and our authentication or face and uh, thumbprint. Uh, also, the trends happening also in the digital banking space where now more and more we see banking opening their own digital arm so they can compete with those financial technologies. Financial service users have started doubting the value of the centralized model, centering around financial institutions and governments. This gave birth to blockchain technology as a new solution. Can you tell us a bit more about what blockchain is? Indeed, thank you for the question. Today we are witnessing a revolution in the finance world. And all of this has started with a vision by Satoshi Nakamoto in 2008 and the first utilization of it, which was the Bitcoin in 2009. But all of this has actually started because the failed trust in the global banking system and each economic downturn, the Federal Reserve comes in and helps the banks and gives them bailout. But actually the people are the people that are suffering in terms of what's happening in the economic downturn. So this, this new movement was created to have the decentralized and transparent and distributed ledger, i.e. you cannot change it even if you want to hack it or control it. You cannot do that. So the blockchain, and thanks again to Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, in the beginning they started fighting, all of the big banks started fighting the blockchain technology. They didn't want to adopt it. Now all we see is the big banks was JP Morgan, Chase Manhattan, adopting those technologies and actually investing in them to try to uh, be in the front of what they missed in the last 12 years. So blockchain is about safeguarding those uh, valuable digital assets that we have in a really decentralized, transparent and a distributed ledger where you cannot change everything. Uh, so this is a new way of thinking and doing business where traditionally if you wanted 
to uh, erase a record inside your database, inside your financial institution, that was possible. With blockchain, now transparency comes in and you cannot change that record. It will always remain on the blockchain. And how is blockchain revolutionizing fintech? Uh, well, it is actually touching every point of fintech and the financial system. Blockchain can really transform regular financial processes into entirely transparent uh, ways built on security and more, more specifically efficiency. It eliminates third parties. We don't need any more lawyers, third party companies uh, and many other things that you can actually add to this. It reduces the operational time and most importantly the cost because today we are really in an optimizing uh, uh, economy. Today the world you have to optimize for you to win. It also it helps us innovate and create innovative products. For example, peer-to-peer uh, -peer payments. So we don't need any third party or bank or financial uh, institutions for us to do transaction, not even on a Saturday, Sunday. Uh, it's, a, it's actually working 24-7. So this is a big advantage. Identity authentication instead of centralized one and verification. So I don't have to go and centralize my database now. I can have it on a public ledger or even on a private distributed ledger for authentication. And by design, it is secure. Also, some of the examples are crypto lendings uh, as new financial instruments and products. So we are seeing a big hype and big revolution in the fintech especially on the blockchain side, because it is really opening the world. And then we are in the beginning. Just imagine after 12 years, we are still in the beginning of this revolution because the world is there. The world is changing. Technology is changing and innovation is changing. And now we're talking about new uh, features such as decentralized finance, which is DeFi. That's a whole totally new concept, which has been there only for two and a half years. So that new comes up can add a lot of value on fintech, especially in the blockchain. What are the latest blockchain trends? Uh, well, blockchain trends are many now. Uh, the last one we thought we thought about is uh, actually DeFi, which we mentioned, but more specifically, how instruments are now becoming more and more available. On a public blockchain or on a private blockchain, we can have our own financial instruments directly integrated into this in ease of use. You don't need systems to be purchased. You don't need much involvement or development. All of this is already pre-configured, pre-built, and they are ready to host uh, technologies. We've seen a little bit, we will talk about it possibly later. Uh, now, NFTs, for example, are driving force for uh, adoption and creating new financial instruments on the blockchain. So big blockchain as a whole, as, as, as we said, it's totally new. Uh, 12 years is nothing in the age of technology versus 400 years of banking, of traditional banking. So information and the way we are doing business and this whole new ventures and features are really upon us and then changing the world, as we said, as a revolution. What other potential uses for blockchain are there? There are many. Uh, was it from data security to compliance with the government, from uh, digital uh, assets between two governments or two countries, uh, connecting two different worlds, authenticating our uh, you know deeds or uh, house deeds or our transaction? Um, was it related to our digital identity as a whole? So uh, the uh, blockchain is actually really diverse in utilization. And the more we actually live and the more innovation is available, and that's the beauty about this technology, it's driving innovation as a whole new way. Because before everything was really centralized and now the power is giving back to developers, to people, to innovators, to try to give and change and create new financial products on blockchain and on helping the blockchain technology also innovate itself. In the beginning, let's say for 12 years ago uh, versus now, we had one blockchain and now we are thriving with thousands of blockchain networks, thousands of new blockchain networks, not just the Bitcoin network. We're talking about Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, Tezos, uh, Cardano, and so on and so on. And all of these are really bringing uh, new use cases, each one by its own. They are competing between each other and that competition is super healthy because that brings us new potentials of use cases as we speak. Are there any challenges in this field currently? 
Oh, the challenges is always there. <laughs> uh, data security is one of them. How do you secure uh, the blockchain itself? It is by default secure, but how do you make sure that it's always secure versus also the traditional world where that world is somehow has its own potentials. Now we're talking about smart contracts, and this is the weakest link into the blockchain. So this is where data security becomes part of this and our concern and our challenge. Uh, the second one is compliance with governments, for example, regulations. If you look at UAE, in my belief, it's becoming one of the world leading uh, regulations or regulatory uh, body to allow blockchains and crypto projects in it. So if you look at that, especially the last six months, it's amazing. So many regulations happened in UAE and also in Bahrain. If you look at BIS as a whole, uh, which is regulations for banking, um, if we see only six months ago, before that date, they had zero paper on blockchain, zero. Now they have more than nine within six months. Uh, lack of mobile and technology expertise. This is a totally brand new uh, technology. We don't have much people involved in it. We don't have much people in the development or in the expertise that can be able to uh, cope with the demand. Demand today is so high versus the need or actual skills. Uh, big data and AI integrations. We're still discovering how will this be integrated and how will this can have interfaces into AI and become more powerful because in the end of the day, we need the data. Integrations with other systems, whether it in your uh, organization or on the cloud or with other blockchains, we are having issues with integration. Uh, users, uh, user experience is, is a problem by itself because uh, it happened so fast and user experience was lacking. And now we're talking more about how we can make the user experience of the blockchain Easy, because if you don't have that right user experience, people adoption will become much, much, much less. Uh, as we said, effective marketing techniques, how are we going to adopt this, how are we going to market this? Uh, all of these are challenges today that really are facing us and facing the blockchain industry as a whole. And we are trying to solve them by the day, slowly, slowly, but each day a new solution to, new, to a problem is actually happening. And with that, we're facing and we're going forward towards more solutions. What are some of the most viable fintech and blockchain predictions for the future? Uh, we have a lot. We are currently having what's, have, what's available now, but we have a lot. For example, be, having the money transfer. Today, we have it as far as crypto transfers or so on. But in the financial world and in the blockchain technology, we need to have more how are we going to be actually transferring money? Is it CBDCs? Is that our solution, which is being studied by more than 90% of the world government? So this is one. Uh, financial exchanges, how will they be interacting with each other? Are they going to be separate? Are they going to be integrated? Uh, we are looking into this also. Uh, the lending perspective. Today, we don't have lending in crypto other, or blockchain other than the crypto world. But if you want to have it on the financial sector, regulated and so on, this is our most, uh, I think, prediction towards how we're going to be lending, whether it governmental or people lending. Was it going to be also peer-to-peer? -peer? Is it going to happen using fintech uh, solutions to, be, to enable it much more? But again, in a regulated way. Uh, insurance product, we will be seeing a big a hype in the insurance product because the insurance is not there yet, the traditional insurance are not there yet. So there's an insure tech a whole sector that will be disrupted towards the blockchain. Real estate, for example, you will imagine you will be actually registering your house using, for example, NFTs, and that will be interfaced with your government. So that's so advanced for us to, uh, you know, uh, f skip the hype that we have today on NFTs, which is, uh, for example, the hype about it. It's about art and making money, but actually the use cases is much more, much more than having solutions to our daily lives using those. Uh, voting, for example, will happen on the blockchain. It's one way. You cannot change it. It will identify who is the person that is voting. And with that, you can put it on a blockchain forever identify that this user has voted or that citizen has actually voted to that X and Y. And that can be very transparent and cannot be changed. Uh, of course, government benefits with that. So there's a lot of 
uh, potentials and predictions towards the future utilizations. Rudy, thank you for being our guest today and thank you for sharing your insights. Uh, thank you a lot. I uh, really had the pleasure of being here and hope this was able to give us some more uh, insights on what's happening in the world of blockchain and fintech and uh, try to enhance the understanding. Big thanks to our viewers as well for tuning in. As we go live every day, make sure to tune in for a new topic every day. You can watch a recording of this episode on our YouTube and Vimeo channels or many other episodes of our show. Make sure to drop us a message if there is a topic that you find interesting and useful and we'll review it with our team. Until next time, stay tuned.